Good afternoon, everybody. So I'm James Boot from uh, the 5G Test Beds and Trials Program. I'm the Program Development Officer specifically for Rural Connected Communities. Uh, however, prior to that, I'd worked with the Phase 1 projects. Well, I should say, formerly known as Phase 1 projects. They're now referred to as the use case trials, as you'll see okay. in my presentations. Um, but uh, thank you very much all for coming. Uh, first thing, I just wanted to congratulate the uh, Five Grit team uh, for everything that they've managed to achieve over the last 18 months. I think it's really quite an achievement, and it's fantastic seeing all of the stands out there in the other room. Um, I didn't get a chance to go around them all, but I hope you all did, and uh, you take an um, opportunity to do so in the uh, networking break. Uh, so I'm just going to take you through uh, a quick overview of what the 5G program is, what its aims are, and some of our projects before going into a bit more detail about the Rural Connected Communities uh, project, given today's rural fo focus. So um, the 5G test beds and trials program's main vision is to build the business case for 5G in the UK, um, namely by stimulating new use cases uh, and creating the conditions needed to deploy 5G effectively. Um, so the main uh, focus of this is to make everybody aware uh, across sectors uh, and of course uh, with users as well as as well as in just industry uh, to communicate the benefits that 5g can enable um, we're also trying to foster the development of the uk's 5g ecosystem this involves uh, having discussions and working very closely with industry bodies mobile network operators uh, academia of course uh, and of course users to, to really effectively communicate those benefits uh, and uh, really energize innovation within the UK. Um, we're also, uh, the mission is of course for the uh, UK to be a leader in uh, 5G R&D. Um, we're trying to do this by utilizing the, uh, the skills uh, and the uh, innovation uh, leadership that we have here in the UK. Um, so I'm not going to spend too long on this slide, don't be too scared by the, uh, the wall of text there. Um, but I just wanted to acknowledge that it's really uh, exciting to see how far that the uh, 5G ecosystem has been progressing. Uh, so by the end of uh, October this year, all four uh, mobile network operators will have launched uh, their 5G networks within the UK, uh, which is of course really promising given um, how uh, the development and deployment of 4G uh, within the UK um, happened. Uh, we're in a much better place now uh, with 5G. Uh, however, I do acknowledge that um, all of the deployments that have been announced are, of course, city-focused. So there's, uh, there's a lot of work that can be done to try and incentivize investment in rural connectivity. And we're hoping to do this with the Rural Conne uh, Connected Communities Project. So um, this is just a, a, an overview of some of the projects that the team is, uh, that the, uh, the 5G program is running. Um, you'll notice that these uh, are spread across different sectors, so we're really keen to try and uh, flesh out all of the benefits that 5G can enable across a number of different sectors um, and to use that to bolster the business case for 5G, can, uh, 5G investment in the UK. Um, I'm just going to quickly whip through some of these, conscious of time. So uh, the program's first major achievement was the uh, uh, establishment of the 5G UK University Test Network. Uh, this was a collaboration between the University of Surrey, King's College London, and the University of Bristol. Uh, and between them, they established the uh, world's first end-to-end -end 5G network, uh, which, of course, was fantastic for uh, building momentum within the, uh, the UK with regards to 5G development, uh, and is still being used for a number of different 5G innovation products today. Um, the use case trials, formerly known as phase one. <laughs> so these, again, was, uh, were um, intended to explore the benefits of 5G uh, uh, use cases across a number of sectors, across a number of locations within the UK, um, mm. and of course to trial uh, 5G R&D uh, equipment. Uh, you'll see there that we've had uh, projects spanning healthcare, tourism, agritech, manufacturing security, uh, connected and autonomous vehicle deployment, uh, and of course, farming and tourism. Uh, uh, and of, of, of course, Five Grit was funded as part of this scheme. Uh, I think they're an exemplar of what was achieved during this uh, uh, portfolio of projects. Uh, urban connected communities. So very much the sister project to um, uh, uh, rural connected communities, but with a focus specifically on 
uh, trying to establish the conditions for deployment of 5G equipment and infrastructure within a, a, a densely populated urban environment. Um, and they're doing so whilst also exploring uh, the benefits that 5G can deliver to um, citizens, uh, specifically citizen well-being and also mobility, uh, areas which are sort of um, urban-centric problems. A <coughs> uh, few more projects for you. Sorry, I've got to try and squeeze these in. Um, so uh, 5G security, we're working closely with the National Cyber Security Centre. Um, as well as across government. Um, and we're planning to launch a number of projects that focus on um, the 5G security aspects uh, shortly. Uh, the UK Korea collaboration, uh, so the winner of which was recently announced, um, uh, it's now known as the 5G Rail Next project. Uh, and they're working together, so it's a, uh, uh, a co funded between the UK and uh, Korea governments. Uh, co-funded project to develop uh, 5G experiences and uh, infotainment content and services specifically on transport networks in Seoul. Um, transportation projects, so uh, that's very much working on how to understand how uh, productivity could be improved by deployment of 5G infrastructure along road networks. Uh, and as part of this, we're also uh, uh, helping to fund an upgrade to Network Rails uh, test track in uh, Milton Mowbray, the uh, Riddick uh, uh, test track. Um, and of course, we've got the Industrial 5G Test Beds and Trials Project, which is uh, open alongside the uh, RCC uh, competition. And they're looking to, um, to develop uh, projects that will explore the benefits that 5G can bring to manufacturing and logistics se sectors specifically. That brings us to rural connected communities. Um, so the main focus of rural connected communities was um, we wanted to tie it into uh, the government's existing strategy for uh, improving mobile coverage and driving successful 5G implementation in the UK. And we want to do so by uh, improving the case for investment in rural connectivity uh, by um, enabling a number of uh, new commercial and technical solutions. So trialing uh, use cases as part of these projects that have a, a specific um, uh, benefit to the ecosystem of rural communities and also to the communities there. So the, both, both the people and local businesses benefit from uh, these use cases. Um, and we also want to support the business case for 5G uh, by building and proving demand for these use cases. So I think um, at this moment in time, it's safe to say that there are a number of people who don't currently see the, the investment case for uh, investing in rural connectivity. Everything's very much been city and urban based. Uh, and we want to, we want to change that. Um, so this project is running alongside um, 4G rollout projects. So we're working closely with the barrier busters teams within DCMS, with our policy teams to ensure that everything aligns with the government's existing commitment for 95% uh, uh, coverage across the UK. Uh, and we also want to reduce as many barriers to the deployment of 5G as possible in advance of rollout. Um, I should also, um, I always feel really bad putting this addendum, but should also add that this is not in itself a rollout program. Um, so we're looking to de-risk and inform a future rollout scheme. So the ambition of the project, as I mentioned, is to, uh, to develop new use cases um, which will have a, a, a significant benefit to the community's local um, uh, ecosystems of rural areas. Um, so we're looking to fund between, well, we're looking to fund up to uh, 10 projects across the UK in areas that um, correspond with our designation of rural. That can be found in our application guidance documents. Um, and the focus very much, very much has to be on the benefits to those rural areas. So it could be an area that spans some, some lo uh, urban locations, but the benefits themselves have to be specifically <coughs> rural focused. Uh, we believe that there are opportunities for market expansion in terms of the, the, the types of uh, networks available and the number of network providers uh, for 5G connectivity. Um, this also ties into Ofcom's strategy for um, making uh, spectrum available. There's been a number of developments on that uh, quite recently. We really want to see use cases that have a, a noticeable societal and economic benefit. So 
we want something that uh, we want to see uh, proposals that specifically have benefits not only to the local industry but also to the uh, visiting and uh, local populations uh, and that can be anything from business focus but also to, to public services etc um, we expect to see increased levels of technological innovation as part of this project. It's, it is it is R and D, so we expect to see some ambitious thinking uh, from you all. And it's very exciting that Daniel's giving you all postcards. So I, it's it's great that everyone's going to be whirring away trying to think of great innovative ideas uh, whilst we're talking today. Um, and as as I mentioned, we're obviously trying to help uh, uh, grow the rural innovation ecosystem. Um, I believe it's there. I think we really need to communicate to others that um, there's a lot of innovative thinking going on, some great tech work. And of course, higher levels of security. So it's a big focus of the projects that we, we're, we're hoping to see that a security consideration uh, as part of all pro uh, proposals. Um, this is just a sort of quick overview, uh, a quick overview of the, the key dates and deadlines for the project. Uh, Key things you need to know really are if you have any clarification questions, any, any questions you want to ask us about RCC, you can of course call on me during the networking breaks, but um, you can also submit a formal uh, question to our uh, 5G inquiries mailbox uh, before the end of the 27th of September, which is this Friday. Um, the competition closes at uh, midday prompt on the 25th of October. Um, and we're looking to mobilize projects uh, and get them up and running in uh, quarter one of next year. So if you want to hear any more about um, uh, uh, RCC, you can of course look up our articles on uh, gov.uk, ask us questions through 5G's and 5G inquiries, and um, we'll get back to you shortly with a response. Further information can be found through UK 5G, our uh, 5G innovation network. I uh, highly encourage you all to register to that if you haven't already, if you want to be up to speed on all 5G news. Um, and if you are considering uh, putting in a bid or being part of a consortia for uh, uh, RCC, you can also sign up to their collaboration platform, uh, mm -hmm. which will put you in touch with other interested parties. And that's that from me.